Hello, this is Dallas Phillips, and on behalf of my partner, Sai Bantu, this is our presentation of DIY Infrared Filter. Alright, so the problem arose from my partner, Sai's company. Basically, they have a laser that's 1080 nanometers, and they use this to cut metal sheets, and so they're interested in being able to see the laser to make sure that it is properly aligned to where it was programmed to cut. Um, and so, yes, they could go out and buy a infrared camera and be able to look at it that way, but infrared cameras with gallium arsenide sensors in them can be very expensive, and the filters that come with them can be also very expensive. So we thought, can we implement an inexpensive filter using off-the-shelf products, things that we use every day on a near IR supported image sensor, and would that be good enough to be able to visualize this laser? Alright, so there's two main terms we want to focus on with this experiment. The first is spectral response. So for any image sensor or camera, the spectral response curve demonstrates its transmittance and absorbance capabilities in the wave spectrum. So essentially, which wavelengths will it capture and which wavelengths will just let it transmit through. Um, and the second term is quantum efficiency. This refers to the ratio of incident number of photons and converted electrons. So basically an image sensor works from incident photons going onto the sensor and those photons turn into electrons via the photoelectric effect. And so that efficiency of the number of photons that are incident on it and the number of electrons that come up from it is quantum efficiency. All right, so we have a couple of sources that we want to test out and we want to test a bunch of materials with those sources to compare their IR filtering. Uh, so we're going to be using a desk lamp, a ceiling lamp, a red LED pen, and a security camera that already has some IR filtering built into it. And we're going to test a bunch of materials, mainly that include a floppy disk and a processed film roll. Floppy disks make great IR filters due to the iron oxide layer that is put on them. And iron oxide basically naturally blocks visible light and lets IR light transmit through. And processed film rolls is a process of developing a film through something called the gelatin silver method, which is shown below. Um, and basically, so inside the camera, when you take a picture, you have the bare film and then it gets exposed to light on the film itself. And then this film, once you're done with the camera, you send that film off to get it chemically processed. And this goes through a bunch of baths of chemicals that basically make a negative or positive image um, and make it permanent on the film itself and then you go into a refinement process that will make it light resistant and this process is what makes the film roll a great IR filter because it will block all visible light because it's light resistant. Alright so testing the desk lamp first you can see our graph here um, with no filter, it basically has two peaks, two separate peaks, and the intensity of the desk lamp is shown. Um, but when we add one floppy disk, you can see that the orange curve right here is much lower than the original. And this basically tells us that not as much visible light is going through. So the floppy disk is an effective filter of visible light. And when we added two floppy disks, you can kind of see the trend of it, but uh, it's blocked by the film roll and ESR film, which all three of those as well um, are also essentially zero. I mean, there's a little bit of a peak there in the film roll and maybe a little bit of the ESR film, but compared to the original, how much light was going through, this is a dramatic difference in the amount of light that's being transmitted. Alright, so then going on to testing the ceiling lamp in a similar fashion, we have the bare 
curve from the ceiling lamp and it has a variety of peaks all in different uh, wavelengths and then we really just needed one floppy disk here and it essentially blocked out all of that visible light and so again we've proved that a floppy disk makes a great IR filter for a cheap even digital camera. Alright so moving on to the red LED pen the red pen curve and the 810 nanometer curve are the same bare no filter attached um, but they're just at different intensities um, so then when we add a film roll so this film roll was actually undeveloped because due to timing constraints we could not get it developed um, so we added an undeveloped film just to see how it performed and it did cut out some compared to the 810 one um, but still a lot went through it from the 620 630 nanometer peak that we see um, but when we added the floppy disk you can basically see this gray peak right here and that is blocking out almost a hundred percent of this peak that we see at 630 right and even more so in two floppy disks this yellow curve that you see is almost at the zero line completely um, the interesting part of this experiment is that we saw from the red pen we already saw a small wave infrared being admitted from the pen and p being picked up by the spectrometer um, so this was not only showing that the floppy disk could block out all this visible light that we see right but it could also transmit all of this because you see the uh, film roll actually and the floppy disk two floppy disks are all transmitting that infrared light but blocking out this visible light which is what we wanted our experiment to achieve all right so going into experiment four which my partner Sai will go into on the next slide but basically the setup is we have a security camera that has both visible light and near infrared light sensitivity in it um, so we took a picture of that right here just inside the optics lab and then we took this basic picture just a thumbs up um, that we're going to use when we add filters to it to see how the they compare once we have established a proper image in this experiment uh, with the thumb and all the background components in the lab uh, seem to be darker uh, in the image uh, with, with without any filters. Um, and then adding one floppy disk filter has kind of um, blocked some visible light and made the background um, uh, a little brighter. Uh, some of the images that were shown in the original image um, are kind of unseen. However, some of the darker images in the background seem to have gotten brighter. With two floppy disk filters, most of the visible light is now screened um, and all the light that's that's kind of infrared reflected back from the security camera can be visible and some of the darker objects um, seem to get a little more brighter because it's all infrared reflection back into the camera and you're able to see the difference, um, a clear difference between the images with one floppy disk filter and two floppy disk filters. So we continued testing our theory and we found something really interesting. Um, we initially wanted to see how a camera performs um, in night vision conditions. Um, so we were trying to take pictures using a cell phone camera uh, and try to compare that with a security camera which lets all the infrared in. Uh, while we were doing that, we observed that the security camera was able to capture the cell phone screen with all the visible light that is displayed in a screen. Uh, for example, the camera window as you see in the bottom left image when we have two floppy disk filters, all that, all that visible light that is displayed on a cell phone screen is kind of filtered and you don't see that, all you see is a black screen, uh, which is a great example that two floppy disk filter can act as a visible light blocker, which filters all the visible light out. The potential of infrared spectroscopy is huge in industrial applications such as fiber laser cutting. A high-powered light source such as uh, 1080 nanometer wavelength um, interbeam um, excited light source can act as a laser 
which is used in fiber layers and cutting industry. Um, they cut about any sort of thickness of mild steel, stainless, and aluminum, ranging from 22 gauge all the way up to one inch sheet metal uh, using this concentrated light source. In such applications, wavelength around 1080 nanometers is not visible. Um, so the fiber laser manufacturers depend on looking at the visible light that is kind of reflected back when you're trying to pierce through the material. Um, they use photodiodes and try to adjust their sensitivity gains and then develop an electronic system where they can see the visible light that is reflected back. However, most of the cases, since the visible light that is present around that um, sheet metal or when, when you're trying to pierce through is so high that you could always trigger a false pierce through detection, uh, which kind of um, damages the cut quality of a sheet metal. So in such cases, looking at the 1080 nanometer wavelength, if you're able to sense that, it'll give you a much better accuracy in the pierce through detection and in terms of help uh, develop a proper optimized uh, fiber laser cutting process. So this theory can be well suited uh, for applications like fiber laser cutting uh, because if you're able to block all the visible light for a camera that can let some of the near IR in and then somehow amplify that signal um, by filtering out all the heat signals that, that can be seen due to metal sheet metal cutting, you should be able to see 1080 nanometer or something around that wavelength light um, by blocking all the visible light out. So there is a better chance of looking at the cutting process and then detecting the pierce through the material and also see how good the cut quality can be. Um, that's giving um, a power to the fiber laser manufacturers um, to tune their cutting process in a better way. Finally, to conclude this project, it can be deduced that the floppy disk can be very effective IR filters. Um, they can reflect majority of the visible light black and just transmit all the near IR and shortwave infrared light into the camera. Um, these can be very economical uh, filters to be connected in series with uh, any off-the-shelf camera, which can let some of the near IR in. We might need some sort of amplifiers to boost the signal in near IR. Um, however, the floppy disk will be a very economical solution because they just have um, an iron oxide layer, which can, uh, which pretty much acts as a visible light blocker um, or reflector.